So eight zero two eight six is upwardly compatible with eight zero eight six in terms of instruction set also, and uh, the features certain uh, features are available uh, here also. The same features those are implemented in eight zero eight six along with some advanced features. Okay, and so I will uh, let's start. So first is introduction of uh, this eight zero two eight six microprocessor. Okay, uh, Intel eight zero two eight six. It has twenty bit address bus, uh, which is able to uh, address sixteen megabyte of physical memory. Sixteen megabyte of uh, physical memory. It was uh, designed for multi-user systems with uh, multitasking applications, including communications and uh, real-time process control. Uh, along with certain features are available for arithmetic operations also. Like uh, here in this case, uh, you can uh, you can add uh, you can you can generate the floating number uh, or you can use the floating number operation or the trigonometric operations using the uh, coprocessors, which we. Uh, uh, you need to connect it with 80286 microprocessor. Like in case of 8086 uh, microprocessor, with this microprocessor, you can connect one math coprocessor, uh, which is 8087. Okay, so in this case, in 80286, uh, the math coprocessor is 80287 to perform more uh, accurate uh, operation. Uh, for uh, any arithmetic and logical operations along with certain uh, memory management techniques have been introduced to control the uh, memory portion. 80286 is the advanced microprocessor with memory management and protection abilities. There are certain protections uh, and uh, that's why the operating modes are available here. Two operating modes are available. One is the real address mode, another is the uh, protected virtual address mode protected virtual address mode so these two modes are available in 80286 microprocessor okay and uh, next is the next point is in uh, real address mode in in real address mode it can address up to 1 mb of physical memory uh, just like in case of 8086 the total memory space was 1 mb in 80 86 microprocessor. Okay, so uh, why uh, it was 1 MB in 8086 because uh, there was 20 address lines, so 2 to the power 20, which is uh, 1 MB um, physical memory space. So in real address mode, in in real address mode, uh, the total uh, 1 MB physical memory would be accessed using the 20 address lines A0 to A19. Uh, same way uh, in case of 8086 uh, where it is performed. Okay, uh, the same thing here it is implemented. Uh, the next is the in virtual address mode, the second mode which is called the uh, protected virtual address mode. It can address up to 16 MB, 16 MB uh, of physical memory space and 1 GB of 1 GB of virtual memory address space. Last day I have uh, discussed about the virtual address memory memory address how the virtual memory addresses uh, are uh, generated everything is uh, uh, discussed. So in virtual address mode it can uh, maximum 1 GB virtual memory address space uh, is available. The performance of 80286 is uh, much more faster than 8086 compared to nearest to uh, five times uh, faster than 8086 microprocessor. So uh, that is the introduction of 80286. Certain features are available. Then uh, come to the next uh, point that is the 80286 architecture. So here is your uh, internal block diagram internal block diagram or architectural block diagram where every block is mentioned in a dotted form there are so this uh, internal block diagram is divided into four parts like in 8086 the architectural block diagram was divided into two parts viu eu bus interface unit and execution unit here in 808 uh, 286 80286 the whole diagram architectural diagram is divided into four parts one is the address unit second is bus unit uh, third is the instruction unit and the fourth one is the execution unit 
so i will discuss one by one uh, here so it is divided into four units the first unit which is called sorry first unit so i would uh, like to discuss the first unit as address unit here address unit okay so address unit this portion is called address unit now address unit is uh, actually uh, it is responsible for calculating the physical addresses of instruction and data uh, that the CPU wants to access, processor wants to access. Uh, also, the address uh, lines derived by this unit may be used to address uh, different peripherals also. So that's why here uh, offset adder is there um, and there is a offset address which is to be given to the physical address adder where physical address is generated. So you need two addresses to generate the physical address. One is the offset address, another is the segment address. And now here is your segment address. So what happened actually, the physical address computed by this uh, address unit is uh, handed over to the uh, bus unit after generating this uh, physical address. Okay, so it has 24 bit uh, physical address that must be uh, generated in this position, in this block. Then it goes to the second unit, which is called the bus unit. Here, this position called bus unit, and uh, the address latches and drivers. So in in this uh, bus unit, several components are available like address latches and drivers, prefetcher, uh, processor extension interface, uh, bus control, data transceivers, and six byte prefetch queue. Six byte prefetch queue, and uh, the address lines the the address uh, latches and drivers in this bus uh, unit transmit the physical address uh, thus formed over the uh, address bus A02 A23. One major function of this uh, bus unit is to fetch instruction bytes from the memory, fetch instruction bytes from the memory. Uh, uh, in, in fact, the instructions are fetched in advance and, and uh, stores in a prefetch queue okay stores in a uh, queue to enable faster execution of the instructions now this concept is already uh, all of you know that this this is known as instruction pipelining and uh, thus for fetching the next instruction the cpu need uh, not to wait uh, till the completion of uh, execution of the previous instruction rather uh, when one instruction is getting executed the subsequent instruction is being prefetched decoded and uh, kept ready for uh, execution the prefetcher the prefetcher module in this uh, uh, bus unit performs this task of prefetching this one prefetching and uh, prefetching so after that uh, the bus unit uh, uh, also contains a bus control module that controls the this bus control it controls the uh, prefetcher module uh, the, these fetched instructions are arranged in a six byte prefetch queue. Uh, thus, usually the CPU prefetches the instructions uh, to enhance the speed of the execution. However, uh, one interesting situation is um, happen uh, when uh, there are branch instruction. Okay, there are branch instruction. In case of an unconditional branch, if any unconditional branch is given, uh, then uh, CPU will have to flush out the prefetch instructions and immediately follow the uh, branch instructions since the control will be transferred to the branch destination address. In case of a conditional branch, uh, depending upon the success of the condition, the prefetch instructions will be flushed out of the queue and further prefetching may be um, carried out if required. So another major module in the bus unit is the is the uh, processor extension interface 
because this is an extension interface module which takes care of the communication between the CPU and the processor using these lines. Okay, using these lines. Processor extension request can be given to the 286 from the processor and it is given, uh, it is, it is uh, sending this acknowledge signal using uh, this processor extension acknowledgement. Okay. Then uh, after this uh, bus unit, it goes to, uh, to the, uh, it comes to this uh, third, inst third unit, which is called the instruction unit. Uh, the six byte prefetch queue. Okay, uh, another is that this is here, here, uh, these transceivers, their transceivers actually, uh, the function of this one is to connect the data buses D0 to D15 uh, to the uh, peripheral devices and the outside of this processor okay so this controls the internal data bus operation within the uh, with the system bus then uh, from this one uh, six bit uh, from this uh, one it goes to the instruction decoder circuit uh, is, this is a, here instruction unit is available where instruction decoder is there and then uh, three decoded instruction queue is available so after prefetching this queue uh, when uh, it is ready for execution it must be decoded okay so fetching operation is performed here then decoding operation must be performed in this position uh, the instruction unit accepts instructions from the prefetch queue and an instruction decoder decodes them one by one the decoded instruction uh, are latched onto a decoded instruction queue uh, and then from this one the output of the decoding unit decoding uh, unit drives a control circuit this one this is the execution unit actually uh, where control uh, unit is available ALU circuit is there and the registers different registers are available mm, now it goes to the now it goes to the um, control uh, circuit which is uh, responsible for executing the instructions uh, received from the decoded instruction queue which sends the data part of the instruction over the data bus okay uh, here in this way and <coughs> The EU contains uh, basically the register bank uh, used to store this data, used to store this data uh, part of the instruction over the data bus and, uh, and or used as special purpose register also. So that from the special purposes it goes to this, uh, it gives the address, offset address and offset address can be given uh, from the special purpose register like uh, you have, you have uh, uh, base pointer. Uh, stack pointer these are the offset registers uh, and uh, direct offset can be given like uh, 5000 or 4000 which will be added together and uh, it, it generates one a single offset so that it can be given in this way and from this one it can be given the segment limit also from this control circuit it is given okay so it goes to the segment limit checker also after that uh, here the uh, segment address is created and the combinations of these two addresses the uh, physical address will be generated so when alu performs certain operations like uh, what is the uh, function of alu it is the heart of the execution unit um, carries out all the arithmetic and logical operations and sends the result uh, either over the data bus over this data bus here in this way it gives to this uh, data to the data transfer so that it can operate or it can transfer the data to this uh, data bus or uh, back to the uh, or back to the register banks okay different registers are available to store the result also now uh, in this control um, circuit control unit several uh, signals have to be attached uh, were, uh, there are two signals uh, these are called NMI interrupt and INTR interrupt and two other signals these are called error and uh, busy signals are available so through this control unit these four signals has been attached and the, through this bus unit uh, these uh, uh, signals has been attached like uh, data bus like uh, lock hold INTA bar, uh, 
uh, code signal uh, s1 is the status signals and using hold uh, ready is there uh, then different vh bus high enable signal memory or io bar signal uh, is to be connected to the bus unit so that uh, it is uh, connected to fetch the um, instruction or code from the memory that's why these signals has been connected and another signals like uh, reset signal clock signal vss the sub, uh, ground signal supply voltage and the uh, and the capacitor uh, should be uh, connected to this uh, input pin okay so one uh, 0.047 microfarad 12 volt capacitor must be connected between the input pin and the ground pin to filter the output of the uh, terminal substrates uh, bias generator okay and for correct the uh, for uh, correct operation using 80280 so that it can avoid any spurious activity okay so uh, this is the architecture discussion about 80280 so every block has been uh, given in the slide format then uh, come to the 80286 register organization and here the same thing has been implemented like uh, it has uh, 816 bit general purpose registers and these registers are already present inside 8086 so uh, 80 basically 80286 that is the upward compatible with 8086 the same type of registers has been uh, present here also that is uh, and these are ax bx cx dx sp bp si bi uh, the accumulator base register count register data register stack pointer base pointer source index destination index and uh, uh, four 16 bit uh, segment registers these are uh, cs uh, so here one thing you have to uh, uh, you have to correct it that's uh, eight general purpose registers are not there and only, only four registers are available as a general purpose other four registers are for uh, special purpose okay these four registers are for special purpose so uh, four general purpose registers four special purpose registers and four 16-bit uh, segment registers are available code segment stack segment data segment and extra segment and uh, next is the 16-bit instruction pointer is available instruction pointer which can be used as your offset if cs segment is been uh, selected and another 16-bit flag register is there 16-bit flag registers are uh, there and additionally one new 16 bit uh, control register is there which is called the uh, machine status word register machine status word register or machine control word register the both of both are same uh, some books has been assigned by this machine status word or some book use this machine control word this term okay don't confuse with these terms these are same so here is a flag register format so you must see this upper position which is uh, the 16 bit format like from d0 to d15 now d0 that is the carry flag then parity flag then auxiliary carry flag then zero flag then sign flag so these are available in 8085 microprocessor then trap flag intro flag direction flag and overflow flag these four flags has been introduced in 8086 microprocessor now another um, two bits are uh, three bits have been um, applied uh, implemented here to to create a flag and these are called uh, io privilege level flag and this flag basically uh, combines the two data bits d12 and d13 Okay, D12 and D13 both are uh, used in this case. So two bits are used and it is called IO privilege level flag. And another is the uh, nested task flag. Nested task flag. Nested task flag. Is it clear? Nested task flag. And the next is uh, the lower position, which is the um, upper upper bit from D16 to 
D16 to D31. So lower 16 bit is called the flag register for H0 to H6 and, uh, and among this upper 16 bit only 4 bits are available to, uh, to create 4 flags like uh, one is called PE, D16 bit actually the combinations of these four bits creates a machine status word. So your machine status word uh, in this position, four bits has been used and a PE which represents the uh, protection enable flag. So basically it places the H086 in protected mode. Uh, if set, uh, if it is set, it goes into protected mode and this can only be cleared by resetting the uh, CPU. So to enable the protected mode, you need to set this flag. So uh, actually, uh, in 80286, uh, uh, except the memory management technique, there has been another uh, another advancement in data protection or uh, in unauthorized access prevention. Okay, so. Uh, this concept come with the concept of segmented memory that was available uh, able to isolate different types of information available in the physical memory of system at an instant. For example, uh, suppose uh, the data lies in the data segment, uh, the code uh, lies in the code segment and uh, stack information uh, in the uh, stack segment. Now, in case uh, the stack data overlaps uh, with the executable code segment and executable code segment again if overlaps uh, with the uh, stack data segment okay then uh, the complete program execution will uh, lead to a random results or it, it gives some erroneous result so now thus uh, so that's why the separation of these data types into different logical segments is the first step towards data protection towards data protection okay and uh, another is uh, available is in uh, protected in uh, virtual address mode. There is another protection is available. So uh, that's why to use it in protect protected mode, this uh, flag should be one. The, uh, then is a monitor program, uh, a monitor uh, processor extension, monitor processor extension. If it is set, if it is one, then uh, it allows wait instruction to generate a processor extension uh, not present exception and uh, that is uh, it creates an interrupt which is called the uh, which is called the process, pro pro processor extension uh, present exception uh, processor extension uh, not available exception okay so it is a uh, one type of interrupt and if and the next is uh, the processor extension processor uh, extension emulator processor extension emulator the meaning of this one is em em so <coughs> emulate processor extension flag uh, if it is set then it causes the processor extension absent exception and permits the uh, emulation of processor extension by cpu and uh, the next is the task switch ts if it is set, if it is set, then uh, uh, then the next instruction using extension will generate the uh, interrupt and permitting the CPU to test whether the current processor extension is for the current task or not. Okay, so that is the verification of the uh, task, current task. So that is the task switching. So, constitutes these four uh, four bits. It it uh, creates a machine uh, status word. So, actually, the machine status word consists of four flags. These are P, M, P, E, M, and uh, T, S. Okay, of the uh, four lower order bits, uh, that is from D sixteen to D nineteen of the upper word of the uh, flag register, and so uh, this is the flag register and machine status word format. Next, uh, come into the real address mode. Mm, so it has two modes. So first consider the real address mode. So in real mode, the address unit computes the address with segment base and offset uh, like 8086. 
and maximum physical space allowed is, is uh, 1 MB, I have told you initially. And when 80286 get reset, it allows uh, starts execution in real mode. So when you press or uh, give the reset signal, so it goes to the real mode. And what are the tasks uh, performed in this position? So it initial, initializes the instruction pointer and other registers of 80286 initializes the peripheral, then enable the interrupts, then set up the descriptor table and prepare for entering into the protected virtual address mode. So these are the uh, function of real address mode. Now, in a real address mode, uh, how address is calculated? So look at this picture where the instruction set, the instruction set is upwardly compatible with uh, 8086. The 80286 addresses only one MB in this case in a real mode. Uh, using A0 to A19. Now this, uh, the lines A20 to A23. So uh, maximum 24 address uh, are present in uh, physical memory, but only, only, only 20 address lines are used in uh, real addressing. Okay, real address mode. Uh, now other lines are, these are A20, 21, 22, and 23. The four lines are not used by the internal circuit of A0 to A6 in this mode. The registers and addressing modes uh, are present here. So I'll discuss that is in later when in, in real address mode, what happened while addressing the physical memory, the 80286 using this VHE bar signal along with A02, A19. Uh, because you need to access the memory banks using two, two signals, A0 and uh, VHE bar. Okay, so uh, the 20 bit physical address is again formed here. Here in this position, 20 bit physical address is uh, formed in the same way as that in 8086. The uh, how the contents of segment registers are used as segment base address. This one segment base address. Uh, and the other register depending upon the addressing mode contain the offset addresses here uh, the address information now 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 combinations of this uh, segment and offset it creates a 20 bit uh, memory physical memory address 20 bit physical memory address now uh, as in 8086, the physical memory is organized in terms of segments of 64 kilobytes maximum size. Okay, so an exception is generated if the segment size limit is exceeded uh, by the instruction or the data. The overlapping of physical memory segments is allowed to minimize the memory requirements for a task. Now the 80286 reserves two fixed areas of physical memory for system initialization and interrupt vector table. Here, inter uh, system engine and interrupt vector table. In the real mode, uh, what happened? The first one kilobyte of memory starting address is from 00 to uh, 003FF is a reserve for interrupt vector table or IVT. Also, the addresses from FFFF0 to FFFF are reserved for uh, system initialization. The program execution starts from this uh, FFFF0 after reset and uh, initialization. The inter vector table of 80286 is organized in the same way as that in uh, 8086. And some of the interrupt types are reserved for exceptions, uh, single uh, stepping uh, operation and for processor extension segment overrun, etc. Uh, so when uh, the 80286 is reset, it, it always starts the, its execution in real address mode, uh, wherein it uh, performs the, fall, uh, the functions like uh, it initializes the instruction pointer and other registers of 80286 initializes the peripherals. Uh, it enables the interrupts. So now it is used to set up the descriptor table and then it prepares for entering into the uh, predicted 
virtual address mode okay so that is the real address mode and in case of uh, protected virtual address mode so here uh, in in this case protected virtual address mode uh, the a virtual memory and memory management concept is implemented here uh, and the address unit acts as a, a memory management unit or it's called mmu so all 24 address lines are used and can access up to 16 megabyte of physical memory now in real address mode what happened only the 20 address lines are uh, used a0 to a19 now here in protected virtual address mode all the address lines like uh, 24 address lines from a0 to uh, a23 lines are used and can maximum 116 mb of can access maximum 16 mb of physical memory now if descriptor table scheme is used it can access up to 1 gb of virtual memory uh, i will uh, i will discuss the what is the descriptor uh, and what is the descriptor table function so i will discuss uh, later after uh, one or two slides the complete virtual memory is mapped with the 16 MB of physical memory. And if a program is larger than this, this 16 MB, it is stored in the hard disk or secondary uh, memory device and uh, will be executed by swapping in and swapping out as per the uh, sequence of execution. So uh, what is swapping in and swapping out? Uh, actually, what is swapping? The procedure of fetching the uh, chosen program segments or data from the hard disk or secondary storage device into the uh, main memory or physical memory is called the swapping okay now and the procedure of storing back the partial results or data back onto the secondary storage is called uh, unswapping or swapping out so swapping in means from uh, uh, from from secondary memory uh, the data byte or the instruction will be will be stored into the physical memory that is called swapping in and swapping out means from uh, the uh, physical memory it goes to the uh, secondary memory is called the uh, swapping out the huge programs are divided in smaller segments of pages arranged in appropriate sequence and last day i have discussed about uh, when i have uh, discussed about the virtual memory i have given the example of uh, how the segments are divided or means the pages are there uh, how uh, how frames has been created in uh, main memory uh, so everything is given so pages are formed in virtual memory and uh, and frames has been uh, has been created in uh, physical memory or in main memory okay so uh, i have two minutes uh, then automatically this meeting will be end and all of you uh, so you must click on the same link to continue this session uh, second session after uh, end of this first session you must click on the same link okay so uh, the next is the what is the role of this memory management unit or MMU actually it translates the virtual memory address into the physical memory address it's a hardware concept uh, so hardware circuit is implemented uh, there which is called as memory management unit in uh, virtual memory can be many times larger than the physical memory or main memory but it is not available there okay and that is the concept of uh, virtual memory so So uh, only programs that are currently required uh, brought from the secondary storage uh, means uh, such as hard disk to the physical memory or main memory for execution purpose. Now this is desirable as a microprocessor is supposed to store large programs and data uh, cannot be accommodated in the physical memory space. Okay, uh, so uh, it is not possible so every programs or data can be accommodated in the physical memory space so your memory will be very less if everything will be stored so your uh, machine or the processor uh, can execute faster uh, way so that um, your machine will be uh, slow that's why what virtual memory has been created so that the uh, memory will be so it, it it is given to the programmer as an illusion that uh, memory has been increased up to certain uh, position 
Okay, so that is the concept of uh, virtual memory, and that's why MMU uh, unit, memory management unit, is, unit uh, is available. Then uh, the hard disk is in the virtual or logical address space, but not in the physical address space. And faster memory such as RAM uh, is used as the physical memory. And before Microbus executes a program, it checks whether the program is available in the physical memory or not. If it is not there, then it uh, goes to the, if program is not available in the physical memory, it goes to the secondary memory, uh, to the uh, secondary memory. And it, it fetches that uh, particular code or, or uh, the segment or the program, whatever uh, you call it. Uh, so the information will be collected from that secondary device and it uh, goes to the uh, uh, and it it goes to the physical memory okay it stores into the physical memory so, so from this one the execution will be carried out so if uh, available space is inadequate